everybody, it's Carmen from Ten Sisters TV, and I want to tell you a little bit about this great pixelated quilt called the Embroidery Flower Quilt. This is a free download from tildasworld.com, wonderful fabric company. The link is going to be below for you to go download the pattern. Um, and I wanted to explain a little bit about this great pattern. Um, we are piecing this on our easy piecing grid. We did some of these little highlight videos for the my Instagram page and so we're kind of compiling those videos for this YouTube video and so but I wanted to explain a little bit about their pattern. When you download the pattern there's lots of pages and but really the only pages that you need to print are the pages that are showing the layout of this pattern right I basically I call it a layout where you've taken that quilt and you've divided it into sections now the good news is that our easy piecing grid panels are 9 by 14 squares on the one inch one and a half and two inch finished panels well this embroidery flower quilt each of these sections are 14 by 18 squares and what that means is each of the sections on this embroidery flower pattern take two easy piecing panels laid horizontally I mean we could not have planned this better and so you're gonna download so you can tell I've been using these pages you're gonna download um, or print off these pages and then of course you're gonna want to print off the all the color fabrics all the fabric requirements and the thing that's really cool about this little chart is it tells you the fabric and how many squares to cut out so what I did is I printed one of these in color and I cut all of them out and I taped them to my stack of fabrics that I had so we all kind of have our own system of putting these fabrics together um, but this is going to be a super fun project and a, a beautiful quilt um, I'm going to um, have a link also for a sizing chart because with Easy Piecing Grid, because the panels have the same number of squares on them, I pieced my quilt in the one inch finished. Well, the Tilda's pattern that you're going to download is calling for two inch cut squares finishing at one and a half. Well, I wanted a little bit smaller quilt. So we're going to have the sizing chart as a, um, a link so that you can get that sizing chart from us. And the other thing is that there are lots of YouTube videos on 10sisters.com. That's my website explaining how we do this, all these great quilts in the exact same technique. So it's not just this pattern. So. Have fun and be sure to comment if you've got any questions. Piecing on the Easy Piecing Grid again for our beautiful embroidery flower quilt. A couple things I want to talk about placing your squares on. Remember, you're going to have that bumpy or fusible side up. But one thing I want to point out is that when we print the grid, these squares are actually printed just slightly bigger than your cut size so that when you lay the squares out, you don't necessarily need to see a gap. This kind of depends on your cutting. You know, those fabric squares can be right next to each other, um, but we are actually printing these squares a little bit, bit bigger because when you go to sew and you fold on that fold line, we're giving you room to fold, and so you do not have that bulk in your seam allowance. So your fabric squares, they literally can be butted right up next to each other. One of the reasons you're going to see a gap on mine is because my cutting's not perfect, which I don't know. It just isn't. It's just not perfect. But as long as they fit inside the squares, and then as long as they fit safely in those seam allowances, when you fold and sew, they're going to turn out awesome every time. Hey everybody, just a quick little video of talking about fusing panels together. So this panel, I have trimmed the foundation right next to the fabric. And you see on this side, I'm leaving a little lip, anywhere from a quarter to a half an inch. 
And I'm going to use a little glue stick on this little, I call it like a little tab, just this little extra. Now when we're fusing panels together, I'm not matching up my fabric squares because maybe that cutting isn't perfect. What I'm matching up is the actual little dotted lines that are on the grid. And you see I'm just butting those right next to each other, lining up the actual foundation. So just do that with a little glue stick, give it a heat set with the iron, and now these two are fused together and you've eliminated the pinning between these two panels. Hey, I'm so excited. I'm finally starting to sew on this embroidery flower quilt. And so I just wanted to come and check in. A couple things I wanted to show you is I am piecing my quilt with the one inch finished easy piecing grid. And so I wanna go over the layout that when you download the Tilda embroidery flower pattern, the quilt is divided into these nine sections on the pattern and we could not have planned this better because each of the sections on the tilde pattern are 18 by 14 squares and easy piecing grid each panel is 9 by 14 squares so what that means is each of these sections equals two easy piecing panels and so the tilde pattern calls for the one and a half inch finished which is a fantastic size. So you're gonna cut the two inch squares. I wanted to make mine a little bit smaller so my quilt is actually gonna end up, instead of 63 by 81, it's gonna finish 42 by 54. And I actually added a few extra rows of the background so it'll be a little bit bigger than that. But I'm really excited to do this size. So that's kind of what's fun about the grid is you can make this quilt out of any size. If you wanted to make a really big bed quilt, you could do the two inch finish squares and you're going to end up with a quilt that's 94 by 108 inches. So anyway, the other thing that you can see by this section is that I have fused these panels together. So right now I am actually, I had fused all these sections together in one big piece which is a little bit easier to do with that one inch finished. Um, you know, it's just a smaller section, but I will go to great lengths to not pin. So I have fused this whole section and I am sewing the long horizontal seams right now through the whole thing. So I will check back in later after I've made some more progress. What I want you to see is that I have sewn the seams on my panel in one direction. Let me come over to the end. So I've sewn these seams across. And so after you sew the first seam, you are going to clip right between, right between each of those squares. And you can see the little line that is printed on the grid. And you're going to snip right up to the stitch line. Now the reason you're clipping right to the stitch line is so that we can press these seam allowances going in opposite directions. So if you don't snip all the way to the stitch line, there's going to be a little bump there. Now we're doing that so when we sew the opposite direction, those seams are going to nest perfectly. I wanted to show you a little bit about the clipping and pressing of these seams. And so this is the first seam that you just sewed. So you can see I've sewn that all the way through the panel. And then we are going to clip right between each of those squares right up to the stitching line. Now if you happen to snip through the stitching, looks like I did right there, don't worry because it's all held together by the foundation so it's not going to shift or move. But the reason that we are doing this clipping, and you can kind of see here I've got a few rows done, is that we're going to press these seam allowances going opposite directions. 
And the easiest way I found to do that is we are going to press this seam allowance going in one direction on that first row and then just fold it under. And then this is kind of a short piece, so I'm just going to come backwards. Now, I really like, you can maybe kind of hear that a little bit. My iron is generating some steam. Really like using steam on this whole pressing process. And then we're going to just fold it under. And then we're going to go back the other way. So it looks really easy because I've already done it and it's nice and flat. So I'm going to do one that I haven't pressed yet. And this one's going to go this way. So I'm going to just fold that everything back. See, so it's just all nice and flat. And we're just going to press this. I'm going to generate that steam, get that steam going, go all the way across. And then we'll just fold that under. Now, after I've gone through the whole uh, section that I've done, then before I sew the other direction, well, actually, let me tell you why we did all that clipping and pressing. So that when you do fold right sides together to sew the other way, Look how those are all nested perfectly. And so there's no pinning or adjusting. We're gonna just sew these seams going the opposite directions. But before we do that, I like to turn it over and you can actually kind of see on some of these where the, it's easy to get like a little fold in some of these uh, seams, you know, where they don't get really nice and flat from the back side. And so I like to turn it over to the front side and again, See, I kind of give that just a little bit of a tug, and I just want to flatten this out. So again, steam is definitely your friend here, and we're going to get this all nice and flat, and now we are ready to sew those seams going in the opposite direction. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show you while we've got it here on the iron is, and I was trying to be a little bit careful with my pressing because you see how I've left a little lip. I've left a little of that fusing on one of the edges. And so the reason for that is I am going to, and I'm not going to line it all up exactly. Well, yes, I can. I can do it right here. We're going to, what I want to show you is on, I have actually fused several of these panels together. Oops, I need to be down here. Anyway, I've fused some of these panels together, so I've got this big long section. But what I want to point out is that fusing panels together is just an option. So I personally will go to great lengths to not pin. But what I want to point out here is that I've sewn the seams this way. And so now I like to call this closed. See, this seam is now closed because it's sewn. Well, these seams going in this direction are still open they're, because they're not sewn. And so I can fuse, still fuse this to the next section. Once these are sewn, I'm going to just pin those panels or those sections together. So what I like to tell everybody is that whatever size you feel like you can manage, there's no pinning. And so the way that we fuse panels together is we leave a little lip. Now, on my panel, I, the little lip actually has the printed numbers on it because I've got a really dark background and darker fabrics. I'm not worried about that. But if I was doing a white fabric or a real light fabric, I would make sure that this little extra lip had no printing on it. And so then when we match these panels up, what's exciting is we're not matching up the fabric squares necessarily because what if our cutting is not perfect? What we're matching up are the little dashed lines from the printed foundation. Now, this is actually not the right spot for me to fuse these together, um, and so I'm not gonna iron it down, but you can do a little glue stick or a glue pen, and then we're going to just line these up, just matching up the grid lines and so basically now what you've done is you've just eliminated the pinning between these two sections uh, there's a whole video on tensisters.com just talking about fusing tips and so we're getting closer to getting this quilt done this is the back of my sections and i just want to show you after the pressing how these seams have been pressed in opposite directions 
So this is what we want it to look like so that when we do fold right sides together, just so the other way, see how those are already nested perfectly. So I just wanted to show you what that looks like. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully it wasn't too disjointed and it made sense. One thing I wanted to remind you is that uh, the link to download this pattern is below and also the link to 10sisters.com where it has lots more tutorial videos and also the link to the sizing chart in case you want to make this quilt in either the one inch, one and a half, two inch finished, and even half inch finished. So lots, lots of, lots of options. The other thing that I wanted to be sure to let you know is that we have four books full of easy piecing patterns. And if you go to 10sisters.com, then you can find, I think we've got almost 80 patterns that you can download. They're either free or 99 cents. So endless, endless opportunities for quilts in this exact same technique. I always like to say endless possibilities and one set of instructions. So check us out at 10sisters.com. Uh, we are 10 Sisters Handicraft on Instagram. And we have a Facebook page that's called 10 Sisters Grid Quilters, where you can go uh, post projects you've made or ask questions. So thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time on 10 Sisters TV.